Hello everybody and welcome to the second episode of Survival Trucking. So this means we are returning with Derek, who is the driver, and he is on level 1. He has 501 experience points and has a bank account balance of £6,058. And no trucks, nothing at all. In the previous video he was driving from Cambridge to London, and then he went from London to Norwich, which is where we are now. And at the end of all that, I think we did get the flammable liquids ADR certificate, which was very good. Uh, so we can put that into um, into use today by starting off with a delivery of cut flowers. Yes, of course, uh, a one ton load of cut flowers. <laughs> and that is actually the best price as well. So yep, that's what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> Certainly not using the ADR certificate, but that is 20 pounds and 60p per mile. And it means we're going to Dover which is a great place to get across to uh, to mainland Europe. So we will take that and we'll begin. Right, quite a nice day. I'll just get the engine started because we do have the simulated air brakes installed, well enabled. Um, I ran a vote on this after the previous video and the option to enable it won, which I'm very pleased about. I wanted to enable it anyway, I just wanted to clarify. Um, and yeah, thank you to everybody who said just put it into realistic automatic or whatever it's called real automatic and then just keep it in neutral and rev the engine a bit to build the air pressure it's a good idea i will do it <laughs> and uh, yes also the other highly requested thing was to have the uh, the root advisor mod which you can see here instead of it being over on the left hand side there we have the heads up display down the bottom which is very unobtrusive and it's still there we can still see everything but it just looks good I suppose every now and then it would be a good idea to um, to switch off the sanav altogether. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't really um, need to be there anymore because we have the integrated sanav in some lorries, so I could use that, and then I can still have the heads-up display down the bottom there for the time and stuff. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. We do need to get started here. Um, oh, and also, before I do anything, the console. Yes, I have increased the traffic density. Uh, in the previous video, it was noticed by everybody, I think, how quiet the roads were. Now, there is a, a console command for this. Before I say anything, Squirrel has made a fantastic video, a very informative video, which shows you how to enable the console and also how to do a few nice little tricks in there, like fly around the lorry and stuff. Great for if you're making videos. Um, so yes, I'll drop a link for his video down below. Likewise, the um, the Root Advisor mod, I'll put a link for that down below. But the command is uset g underscore traffic 9, if you want it to be. That's what I'm going to have, but basically you can go from 1 to 10. 10 is the busiest, 1 is the quietest. So I'm going to have 9. I think that's going to be a good thing to do. And yeah, I, I do have mail. Right, so we should probably look at these more often. Brand new DAF trucks. Okay, that's in Cardiff. Need money? We thought you might like to know that we have an offer. Oh no, we're not doing loans. Yes, <laughs> this is this has got to be tough. We're not going to be doing any loans at all. And drivers with own equipment needed. Okay, so that would be um, that'd be good when we actually do have our own truck. So at the moment, none of those are relevant to us but we do have this very nice lorry just here. So let's get it into uh, into gear and we'll we'll head off. So, yep, this is our trailer for today. Our first trailer for today. Yeah, I asked the question, uh, would you like to see me doing some third person view as well? And yeah, a lot of people want me to do third person view. So we're gonna sort of alternate between them, but not at awkward times. So if I'm in the middle of driving on a motorway, I will not be swapping to third person camera only when we're sort of in the right position to. So if we're at traffic lights that would be fine. No problem at all. Right so, oh and also yeah apparently the audio was a good level for everybody. I think a few people said it was a bit too quiet but when I was editing it I thought that the uh, the game sound was a bit too loud so yeah, well it probably depends what device you're watching it on. Um, yes, and the other thing actually is the mirror. The left mirror, which I've just opened on the left hand side there, 
top left. Many people said it's probably a good idea to have it because then we're not going to have to keep looking around, which I know isn't as realistic, but it might make things a bit better. I've also uh, increased, no I haven't, I've reduced the suspension stiffness, so it's all very flexible now. So it will probably make my braking look heavier, even though it isn't. Um, and I've also slightly reduced the trailer and truck stability. This will make it hopefully look a bit more realistic and also, um, yeah, a bit more tricky as well. It means I can't be flying around corners. Not that I was going to anyway. Right. So, although the heads-up display is in the best place, by a long way, I'm still going to have to get used to it. Because I need to keep looking down and see the speed limit. Well, I guess I should know the speed limit anyway of the road. But, yeah, I, I always check the, the HUD. Okay, I think I'm in the right lane. I might have uh, suspension stiffness a bit too soft. I'm pretty sure it is a bit too soft. But I can tweak these things. As for the road, uh, the traffic density, it's looking good. This is much more like it. Especially when everybody goes the other way. So uh, we have the roundabout to ourselves. Okay, I think we're going up here. I think this is probably the first time I've ever used the integrated sat-nav. Again, I had comments saying you can remove, well, you can you can switch it off basically. You can disable the integrated sat-nav. I suppose it would just be a blank screen. I'm not having to do that yet because, well, since I installed the uh, the root advisor mod, it it sort of yeah we we don't need to do that. Which is nice. I was going to do it, but I found out it's just not necessary. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering if the the air pressure was just really bad in that particular lorry. I don't know why it would have been, but it, it doesn't seem to be an issue in this one. We've just been driving fine. I'm actually going to check in a minute and just make sure I, I did actually enable it, because it seems to have been too easy. I would like to also just, as I said, stiffen the suspension a bit. Oh, crikey. Yeah, so despite it being traffic density 9 out of 10, it's still not, like, super busy. It's, it's just right. The UK in real life is busier. It's things like that though, um, where you, you're going to have quite a substantial hold up, because I can imagine the AI gets a bit confused. And also, if a car crashes or if a lorry crashes, um, sometimes they just sit there and they never move, so that can cause a few problems if you've got really high traffic density. As for steering wheel sounds, I don't think it's too much of an issue. It is quite a loud steering wheel. Much louder than the Logitech. But I think some people like the sound of it. So yeah, I won't go on about that. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to enjoy the drive. That's the plan. I was absolutely blown away by how well received the first episode was, which I, I really do appreciate. I was expecting to put it on and just sort of get like a 95% like ratio. And I think it got about 98, which is good. That's really good. I don't think I've ever had an ETS2 video do so well. Uh, so yeah, it means a lot to me. I, I do appreciate it so much. I'm not trying to get you to click on the like button or anything. I don't mind which button you click there. It just... Well, I do mind. I kind of contradicting myself. I, I mind, but, you know, I'm not... I don't... What's the word? 
what's the way of describing this? I, I, I'm not going to get too upset about it if, um, if if you dislike it, because it, it means that I, I need to improve. It's always a tough one. Okay, dual carriageway for about five miles, uh, if that. But if you have any other suggestions, please do comment down below. Oh yeah, the other thing was to just switch off all the sat-navs and try and drive just using the road signs. It is something I'm going to do. I will be doing it in the UK because I've got no chance in another country. Um, but I'm not going to do it yet because I'm just sort of still getting into this. Because I don't usually drive as realistically as possible. In fact, when I play ETS2, I tend to play multiplayer, where all the rules are thrown out the window pretty much, except for the truckers MP rules, of course. But the normal highway code, for example, is not really followed. It's just put your foot to the floor and see where you get to. Yep, yeah, so speed limit is showing 60, but I think we can't go over 56, if I'm not mistaken. So I won't be going over 56. Hmm, yeah, as I've started to get used to the suspension stiffness, it seems to be okay now. I should have indicated there. This is a good opportunity to go third person. Handbrakes are good too. Right, back in the driver's seat. I just made it through there. Um, I think we can be in that lane. Probably should be in that lane. Oh, no, I'm probably in the wrong lane, aren't I? Whoa, whoa, no. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, no, no, I can't. That one was definitely in the wrong lane, I think. Not many times do you say I think after definitely. Okay, right, well, um, as usual, I will leave it to my viewers to determine who is at fault. I would love to hear from you. Well, we'll continue. Did we take any damage there? No, we didn't. Yeah, that one shouldn't have been in that lane to go round. Okay, well, uh, let's continue. As we do in this game, we have a crash and then we just drive off. To be fair, they drove off. I, I do like this lorry. But it's going to be a very long time before we can afford something like this. I think the best thing for us to do is just to buy something cheap, probably old, and then just, just run it and run it until it's got to the stage where it can't really cope with what we're wanting to do with it. Because like I'm looking to do heavy haulage eventually. And yeah, a little old lorry is not going to be able to do that very well. But by that time, we should have more money. Right, so cruise control at 56. I 
55. Uh, just wondering, yes, it does tell us how many miles are left. 123 miles to go. It would be nice to get there before it gets dark. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn the camera off. But when we are driving for ourselves, when we have our own lorry, we're going to probably always do the day shift. We're not going to do night shifts and stuff. I think for video purposes it's just going to become a bit too much if it's always dark. We don't want to be starting at like 6 in the evening and then finishing at 8 in the morning. We want to be sticking with the daylight. As for time lapses, I did read several comments about it. Um, I, I, what basically, what I picked up from the comment section was for the really long drives, like if we were doing four or five hundred miles, then I could time lapse some of the fairly open stretches. But if it's a drive like today, it's best not to do any time lapses at all. I agree. I do think that is a good idea. But what I don't want to do is cut out any really nice landscapes because this is Pro Mods and there's just some fantastic scenery and it would be such a shame to cut some of it out or time lapse it because you can't really appreciate it fully. Now it's looking busy up here. Some quite substantial queues. Ah, oh, it's traffic lights. They're going in a different lane. Suits me. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't really go. I do jump cut at traffic lights though. One car. That's all there was. It wasn't really worth stopping us. Right, so which road is this? Darford Crossing, M25. That will do. Queues likely. Yep, yeah, again, this is the road where you're going to want to have traffic set to the highest amount. We are one off the highest. And it's still surprisingly quiet, actually. I suppose we're going to get a... a fine, well, not a fine, a, a toll here. Going to have to pay for this. I do want to look around. Oh, there's a ship right there. Nice. Okay, just going to very carefully and very bravely go to third person, something I wasn't going to do. Yeah, not going to make a habit of that. Let me just centre the camera. Sixty-five miles. Wonder how busy it's going to be. Yeah, I don't know if this game knows about Brexit. <laughs> Hopefully not. And we're off. Dover Channel Tunnel and Maidstone.
Again, I do have all the realistic trailer brands, all the real trailer brands installed. Yeah, I'll put a link for that mod down below. It, they're all from the Steam Workshop. It just brings the game to life. I think the truck brands, the trailer brands in the in the base game are actually very good, very believable. But it, it's not quite the same. Getting dark. Uh, what's this? The M20? Uh, yeah. So, Channel Tunnel, Folkestone, and Dover. We don't really need to worry about fuel and resting because we don't own, a, own our own company, so it's just all sort of dealt with. We rest between jobs automatically, and the company pays for the fuel. But that is one aspect that I do like doing. I think it's quite nice to be able to manage that. This lorry seems to be going quite slowly. Must be heavy traffic in front. But we do need to be in this lane anyway. Ah, oh, what's going on over there? There seems to be a bit of an incident. So it's been a bit of a crash. Don't want to be distracted too much. I'm hoping to do another job today. I think it'd be nice to do a bit more than one job per video, but as they get longer, we're going to probably only be able to do one. But the good thing about doing these longer ones is, well, experience. The more experience we get, the more perks we get. Well, I say perks, the more certificates we get if we're doing ADR. But yeah, I think the best ones to go for to begin with are the ADR certificates and also the, the distance ones. Because then we can go further. Okay, so our destination is just at the end of here somewhere. getting close, don't know why it's lagging, probably just loading a bit of scenery in. Yeah, a bit of an understatement really, a bit of scenery with pro mods, <laughs> it's, it's so well detailed, it's amazing. Right, we're in Dover. Oh, good. The lights are in our favour. But I think it's been fine. The suspension, the trailer stability, it's all good. Ah, they were in our favour. That's the second time I've been stopped. Just getting used to my controls, yeah, because we've got the uh, the neutral that's a different button now assigned to the steering wheel I don't know exactly where we're going Somewhere at the back of here. Transinet.
I think it is all the way to the back. Now another control which I do need to enable, which I haven't done, is the one which sets the park yourself option as default. That's probably a more technical term. Uh, yeah, this one here. Because we need to get as much experience as possible. Okay, so I think the best way of doing this, well, as many viewers said before, is to try and make sure that our best side is always the side that we're reversing on. Not always possible. And this is one of those. And actually a few people said, oh, can you do third person view when reversing? I think I'm going to set a rule of third person before and after, but not as I'm doing it, because that's just like sending a drone up and, and watching the drone footage. Although it would be nice to be able to get out and walk around. Actually, you, you can do using the console, because it's always good. It, it, like, if you don't know for sure what's back there, you should get out and take a look. But I'm just going to try it. Firstly. And this might end very badly. Yes, yeah, so I can see I'm very close to another trailer. Potentially a wall as well. Let's just take a look. Yeah. Oh, want to be in forwards. That's easier. Get in there. It will actually accept it, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that. Quite a tough bay to get into. Right. That should do it. So it was excellent. There was that crash, which is yet to be determined. But um, yeah, 216. Not bad. 438 experience points. And another £4,749. But we're going to need it because of... Yeah, <laughs> we, we're, not, we're not using loans. So we have had an ADR... As I said, long distance is a good one to go for. Deliveries up to 466 miles plus 5% high reward for delivery distances longer than 310 miles and 25% extra for over 310. That's quite good. Um, yeah, I think we're going to alternate between the two. We'll do one long distance. Next we'll do ADR. So, yeah, as you've just seen, we have arrived in Dover. So I need to do another one from Dover to somewhere else. Uh, now, let's just see. Land distance, 282 miles. 20 pound and 20p per mile. Quite a nice lorry too. Still, it's quite heavy. But that's not a huge concern at this point. Because they're all heavy. <laughs> they're all obviously being exported from the UK so I think that is that is just the best one to go for we'll go with it right so here we are in a Scania 59 reg let's get the engine started get some lights on and I've just checked the um, the air brake simulation and it is enabled and we can move straight away so that's interesting I don't understand that first lorry that we used. I think it was the DAF. I think it must have had a hole in the tank or something. It must have been leaking out. 
Yeah, so it does say 313 miles, but some of that is by sea. We're going to be getting onto the ferry almost immediately. Yeah, it's a nice one to drive, this. Ah. Oh. So they do know about Brexit. Ah, oh, crikey. You know I mentioned time-lapsing. This might be a good opportunity to do that. This is us. Our turn. Yeah, it could have been worse. In fact, it was pretty good. I did sort of barge in, though. Push my way into the traffic jam. And then from here, it should be fairly easy. Uh, the crossing won't be too long, so I don't know what time it's going to be when we actually get to the other side, when we get to Calais. front of this one here. Although it's probably going straight through. Yeah, it's certainly busy. Uh, sometimes we do get occasions where the traffic waits for us. I don't think today is one of those occasions. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes you do it in really weird places. Like you're trying to merge onto a motorway, and they all just stop and wait. Which is very kind, but yeah, quite dangerous. Although, this is an occasion where I would love them to wait, because I don't know when we're actually going to be able to go. <laughs> oh no, I have created sitting in traffic simulator by increasing the traffic density. Are there no traffic lights back there? Do they not ever wait? It's just a constant stream. Okay, this is good. Ah, oh, they were never going to let us go. Nobody. Had to force my way in. Right, okay, I know it's always a big bump down the bottom of here. There we go. Here's our ferry. At least they waited for us. I would have been there all day. So, yeah, again, the employer pays for this. £336. So yeah, we have 275 miles remaining. Calais discovered. Seems weird when I've been playing multiplayer so much. I'm always here. And oh, of course, we're on the other side of the road. Mustn't forget that. Gonna turn into quite a long video, this I think, unintentionally. European Union, you're right. Well, I think it might even apply for, for this video here, but in the future, if I sort of get to a place where it's getting extremely long, the video but I don't want to cut anything out. I'm just going to have to do two parts, so I'll just release two videos. Pretty much back to back. 
Good job there's traffic lights here. They could have done with some of them over in Dover. I think I have probably got the setting right because this is how busy places are. It's only if you were in the middle of nowhere, just in the countryside, and it was just streams of traffic, that's when it would be wrong. But I don't think it would be. I think it would be fairly quiet. Um, I don't actually have to be in this lane, do I? I'm sitting here unnecessarily. They're all turning right. So as I've mentioned, I mentioned it in the first episode, this series is very slow paced. So yeah, if, you, if you're the kind of viewer who wants me to progress unbelievably fast and we just get to buy our own lorry in three episodes, it's probably not the best series for you to watch because um, it is, it's going to be a very long time. You can see the rate that we're progressing. It's actually quite good because the money is very good, but it's not going to be three episodes before we buy the first lorry. Ah, oh, wrong lane. Yes. There's me indicating right on a roundabout. Some bad driving there. <laughs> um, right, so we've got some traffic lights or something, Tra road works up here, down to one lane. They're going into our lane. Brilliant. I guess I should have let him go. Or her go. Hmm. It's damaged the trailer but not the load. Still. They just drove into me. <laughs> um, yeah. These things happen. Don't think my attitude would be quite the same if that was real life. Yeah, if only it was daytime. That would improve things. I think we're out. Right, let's get that pedal down to the floor and we will get our speed up to 56 miles per hour. It's supposed to be there in about five and three quarter hours. Uh, so we have quite a drive ahead of us. And this looks like quite an open road. So I will see you when we discover an even more interesting place.
Another crash. That was a funny one. I don't know what that lorry was doing. <laughs> there's, there's so many different crashes that are happening which need to be examined by my viewers. And please do put a... It's turned into a bit of a list. Yeah, please do create a list of the crashes and um, try and determine who was at fault. Because it might have been me. Usually in this game, I'm just so busy focusing on the the road signs and where I'm actually going. I don't really pay attention to how a crash actually happens. Obviously, I'm paying attention to the road vehicles, the road users, but not how it actually happens. So yeah, it's just been open roads. I think time lapsing this has been fine, and actually probably the rest of this journey is going to be fine as a time lapse. It's, it's when we're going these really, really interesting places like up mountains, that's when time lapsing would be a huge mistake. There's just too much to see. But at least it's now morning. Almost. Yeah, 10 to 4, it's getting light. Overall, with the exception of that crash, it's been going well. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. You're riding shotgun. The feeling will chase. I'm wide awake. Take me away now. Don't you blame me Yeah, this feeling I've got is making me crazy Making me crazy So I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive there. Yeah, there was nothing really worth doing in real time there. You know, it was the best because it was getting light as well. Uh, but yeah, it's been overall a pretty good journey if you ignore all the few crashes. There has been some fairly interesting driving from the AI. But I'm not saying it wasn't me at fault before, and I've done a few last second manoeuvres, I know. You can be the judge of all that. Ooh, a Renault truck dealer discovered. I want to be in that lane. One of my last... Ah, oh, the lights would turn, wouldn't they? Yeah, last second manoeuvres. But it's been good. I have enjoyed it. What's going on over there? Fire, fire engine just... I was going to say fire extinguisher. Uh, I guess it is. Yeah, fire engine just driving around doing weird things. Do we have damage on the... You know, we've got 4% on the cab, 2% on the trend, nothing on the cargo though. So that's good, that, that's all that really matters for us. Right, that's our place.
Hopefully they give us a better one this time. Nope, it's right at the end. Okay. <laughs> Still, I think it is better than the first one. I can see why some players do skip this. But it's satisfying when you get it right, especially if you do it first time. This is good. Let's just get it into reverse. Always helps. Yes, of course, the brake is no longer the... <laughs> yeah, the brake is no longer the brake. It's now the accelerate. I've got to get used to this realistic um, automatic, because I, I don't use it. First time using it. Right. Well, it was excellent. £6,004 and another... 546 experience points, which means we've leveled up again. That is two in this video alone. So ADR is the next one. What do we have? We have got class one explosives, class two gases, we've got flammable liquids, flammable solids, toxic and infectious substances, and corrosive. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with corrosive. That'll be interesting. So there we go. Derek finishes on level three with 1,485 experience points and now 16,286 pounds. That's pretty good progress. I'm very happy with that. So we're gonna leave it there. Again, please do post all your suggestions, opinions, and everything down below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.